Yo, what's good YouTube, man? It's Gabe with another fan TV, man. Back at another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, comment your thoughts down below on this video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. Look, all right, man. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson haven't been able to come to a deal, haven't been able to really uh, rectify whatever the issue is between them two, all right? Um, and this is how I look at it. February 21st is going to be one of the biggest days in Ravens franchise history um, in a while, honestly. And what day is that? That is the uh, the official opening of the franchise tag window. All right. The franchise tag window is going to be open from February 21st to March 7th. So that's about two weeks, you know, two weeks plus. They really have to decide whether or not what they're going to do with Lamar Jackson. Exclusive tag, non-exclusive tag, whatever the case may be. Now, look, all the reports are saying that, you know, um, an exclusive tag is coming. But as I've said before in previous videos, the media doesn't know what's going on. They don't know what's happening. They're going to guess. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, um, while this negotiation hasn't, I'm not going to say it hasn't been you know, pretty and things like that, they haven't really leaked too much about each other to the media. You know what I mean? So the media's been kind of left in the dark. They've been kind of pulling that straws. Oh, he's a hundred million, they're a hundred million dollars apart, or with a report where they can't guarantee where Lamar Jackson is going to be here to the new offensive coordinator as well. That's kind of an obvious statement on the contract. So the media's grasping at straws. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. But the Ravens know that they got two choices. The exclusive tag, the non-exclusive tag. That part is very clear. That part is very cut and dry. The part, the really, really important part, the big part is what choice do you make in this in this in very, very tough scenario. All right. Um, a scenario that the Ravens put themselves in, if you're being quite honest, right? We can go back to 2020, um, you know, payoff loss versus the Bills, or uh, you know. And Josh Allen got paid. It was very easy for the Ravens to say, hey, look, man, Lamar Jackson, you've done enough. MVP in this league, got him back to the playoffs, this and that, cool. We're going to pay you more than Josh Allen. No matter if there's the reports out there saying that Lamar Jackson wasn't ready to get paid that time, he was focused on winning. These are things that Lamar Jackson did say to the media. I'm not going to say he didn't say those things. But they called him up. They called his advisors up and said, hey, look, this is what we want to do with Lamar Jackson. I can't see him saying, hey, yeah, let's, let's kick the can down the road two more years and then we'll come back to it. I can't see that happening. Why? Because this is repeated history. The Ravens did it with Joe Flacco. The Ravens could have signed Joe Flacco earlier. They waited. Prove yourself in the playoffs. And oh boy, did he prove himself in the playoffs, right? Had the greatest playoff ever, right? Um, now, Lamar Jackson obviously didn't have that kind of playoff success. But he hasn't been bad in the playoffs. And that hasn't really been... I can't say the Ravens have lost playoff games because of Lamar Jackson. If you watch the games, a lot of stuff around him fell apart. And that's not his fault. So, that leads us to here, where we are right now, where the Ravens have to decide whether or not they're going to franchise tag their star QB, the best quarterback they've had in franchise history. Because now they've put themselves down the road again, where they've had to make a choice, a decision between whether they was going to pay them early or wait it out. And they were told to wait it out again. And wait it out uh, leaves them in a predicament where nothing good has come from it. So, let's talk about the two options, right? The exclusive tag, a $45 million cap hit, which the Ravens cannot afford. Uh, they've had to cut many, many players. Uh, also, they can quote-unquote negotiate with Lamar Jackson. That's the only thing that can do that. But what faith would I have in them negotiating with Lamar Jackson as the only team when they've already been the only team negotiating them and no deal has come from it? So what am I expecting is going to change? Really, if you see that that, that non-exclusive tag, sorry, that exclusive tag, that $45 million cap hit, and they got to cut all these players to make it fit, really the Ravens are negotiating a trade with another team. That's how I view it at this point. Because they can get a haul like Russell Wilson, you know, uh, multiple first-round picks, couple players, whatever the case may be, right? And then that's your situation. Is that better? Not really, because you have to hope that one of these guys – whether it's a free agent quarterback, whether it's a draft pick, fit and hit in the Ravens offense. No guarantees there. And it's really quite a shame because a lot of Ravens fans might not have been the, the biggest fan of Todd Monk and Hire or whatever. I'm not really here to debate you about that. I said many times Eric B.M. Was, was my top choice, but Todd Munkin was right there for me. I think Lamar Jackson would excel in Todd Munkin's offense. I really do. And he doesn't, he's nothing like Greg Roman. It's not just super tight and heavy, nothing like that. He schemes players open in the pass game. He uses RPO screens, beautiful things like that. If you watch all 22 films, he does a great job breaking down Ravens film, right? And he explains all of this, really, in detail. Um, 
I think Lamar Jackson would be would love Tom Munkin's offense. But at this point, that really doesn't matter. Because the Ravens don't have a deal with them. Um, now, the other route is the non exclusive tag. This route is a little more risky, obviously. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson haven't been able to come to a deal. So guess what the non exclusive tag allows them to do? It allows Lamar Jackson to actually um, negotiate with other teams, right? Possibly sign an offer sheet. And if, they, if he does sign that offer sheet, the Ravens have to either the choice to match that offer sheet or collect two first round picks. All right. Either scenario for the Ravens really isn't a good one. It isn't a good one. All right. And we can say that, you know, Lamar Jackson is being unreasonable. The Ravens are being unreasonable. Whatever the case may be, something is not working and something is broken down the line. All right. Uh, Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson. So Deshaun Watson deal getting a fully guaranteed contract. Did that throw things out of whack? It seems so. It seems so. It seems the Ravens haven't been willing to do that. It seems like the Ravens have been willing to make Lamar Jackson the highest paid quarterback or the second highest paid quarterback, however you want to phrase it, in terms of guarantees. Just not a fully guaranteed deal. That's what the reports say, right? But like I've said before, the reporters don't know that they're grasping their straws. But that's what it seems like. Jefferson Reback said that, that, you know, the Ravens offered him a lot of money, a second highest pay, things like that. And it seems to be the holdup seems to be that fully guaranteed deal. So Jefferson Reback is pretty reliable, pretty um, accurate with his info. So if he's saying that, I'll, I'll take that information then. I will. Because he's a local guy. He's more in touch with the team than, say, you know, even a guy like Ian Rappaport, Adam Sheffield. Okay. So if that's the case, um, Lamar Jackson. What can the Ravens do about that? They could, they could try to wait. They surely can, you know. Joe Burrow's up. Jalen Hurst is up. Justin Herbert is up. If those guys don't get fully guaranteed deals, it'll be hard to see Lamar Jackson getting one. Um, not saying he doesn't deserve it. I fully I do think he does. When you're an elite quarterback in this league, it's hard to say that you don't deserve that kind of contract. It's hard to say. It. Um, for me, I don't play hard. I wouldn't play hardball with my quarterback. That's the one position on my team where I say, hey, look, man, uh, what can we do to have this contract go the way we want it to go? Because we know how important a quarterback position is in football. Now, your other players, even the, even the important position, you know, your, your left tackle, your wide receivers, whatever, you can afford to pay a little bit of hardball with that. You know, trade them, get the picks. Hopefully, you can replace them. That quarterback, hoping you can replace them, and especially when you're the Ravens, when your history of drafting quarterbacks is just not there. All right, Joe Flacco was, he was a good quarterback, right? But before that, there's nobody in the Ravens line. The Ravens line just says, hey, look, you know, you guys know what you're doing at quarterback. There's no one there. Um, So it was a tough situation to be in. It was a tough scenario to even really think about. But here we are, right? So if you're the Ravens, and I'm thinking about it, this is something that I've seen, you know, people talking about. If Lamar Jackson really can't negotiate with other teams, right? Now, I'm sure there's back channel ways the teams tell me, hey, man, yeah, we will offer you this kind of money. I'm sure that that's probably tampering, but come on now. We know that kind of stuff happens in the league, right? We're not going to be naive about it. The Ravens have to strongly consider putting a non exclusive tag on Lamar Jackson. The non exclusive tag costs $32 million, so that's $13 million less than the, than the exclusive tag. They'll be able to keep some more players, and Lamar Jackson will truly be able to see if teams out there are willing to offer him a fully guaranteed contract, will the Falcons do it? Will, will the Commanders do it? Will, um, you know, any other host of teams offer him a fully guaranteed deal? And is it the Ravens will offer him? Was that enough? Maybe he comes back and say, hey, look, man, the market wasn't what I thought it was. Let's get the deal done. I don't know. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. It could be teams two, three teams that offer him a fully guaranteed deal and the Ravens got to decide whether or not they're going to match it. And if that's the case, Lamar Jackson won't be a Raven. The longer this goes, the longer, it, you know, you got to realize that it's becoming less and less a possibility because if the deal was going to get done, it'd be done. The Ravens have a very particular way and they haven't been willing to budge for better or for worse. In this, in this situation, probably for worse. They got a guy that is a premier talent at the position. And like I said, I, I wouldn't play hardball with my quarterback. I just wouldn't do it. I'm, I'm not saying you get a guy everything he wants and you shatter your team. I'm not saying that. But the Ravens negotiations have gotten to a point where 
relationship has to be broken down at some point. Not saying they hate each other, not saying they dislike each other, but on some kind of level, it just hasn't worked out. And the Ravens have to be honest about why that happened. And Lamar Jackson has to be honest about why that happened, right? Um, I, it's hard to blame um, Lamar Jackson in this. He sees the money out there and he's trying to go for it. If we thought about what Lamar Jackson said in his interviews with LeBron, right? He was on uh, the shop. He wants to be a billionaire. How can he how can he guarantee that? Get a fully guaranteed contract. That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start to be on, on track to being a billionaire, right? And not no long six, you know, five, six year deal, you know, four year deal, five year deal, okay. Where he get that fully guaranteed money off. And then hit the market again and get another big contract. That's a good start to being a billionaire. So I don't I don't blame him. The Ravens put themselves in the corner. They could have signed, they could have got this deal done years ago, right? But history repeats itself and they drug their feet again, and once again it's costing them. Um if I'm the Ravens, I don't know. I I, I really do consider the non-exclusive tag. I really do consider it. Because your negotiating with Lamar Jackson hasn't worked. It simply hasn't worked. So now what you could do is this. All right, Lamar, you go out there. You see who's going to offer you what. And whoever offers you that contract, you sign it, we'll match it. That's how much we believe in you. That will be my play. And I get it. That's If the Ravens decide not to do that, it's less conversation. Two first-round picks versus you know four first-round picks and a couple players. It's a big difference. It is. But the Ravens have put themselves in a situation where the cars are in Lamar Jackson's hands. Other teams want Lamar Jackson, right? Other teams are starving for a superstar quarterback. He's right here. He's right there within arm's reach. So another team's going to be like, hmm, we could swing it. We could try. Why well, wouldn't the Falcons try again? They were in there for Deshaun Watson. I think they were the number two choice, right? I think it was down to the Browns and the Falcons. So why wouldn't they try again? So the Ravens have put themselves in a very, very tough situation. They put themselves in a situation where they got to decide which direction is this franchise going to go. Is that big? Is that important? I'm not over-exaggerating. What happens with Lamar Jackson, what happens with this franchise tag decision is one of the most pivotal things that happened to the Ravens since they won the Super Bowl 10 years ago. This offseason is going to be no, like, like no offseason the Ravens have really been through. They're underneath a lot of scrutiny, a lot of spotlight. The Ravens are used to being the smart team, make the smart decisions, make the good decisions. Whatever the way this Lamar Jackson decision goes, they're going to be criticized heavily. And they're not used to that. So how are they responsible? Um, that's what I'm looking out for. That's what I'm waiting to see. Because this week, this start of this of these next two weeks, is some of the most important times the Ravens will be in in a long time when it comes to this offseason. Um, they haven't had this kind of pressure. They haven't had these kind of Big time decisions to make, honestly, in a long, long time. We'll see how they react to it. So that's my thoughts on it, man. It's a big, big two weeks coming up for the Ravens. What do you think they would do? Do you think they'll trade Lamar Jackson, franchise tag him, and stick it out, cut the players? Let me know in the comments, man. But um, if you stay for this point in the video, thank you. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. More Ravens content coming at you. It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.